Marley was dead. To begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. The register was nephew was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it. And Scrooge's name was looked upon change for anything he chose to put his hands to. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Mike, I don't mean to say I know what you're particularly dead about a doornail. Do you? No. I mean, I myself may be inclined to regard, I don't know, uh, but say a coffin nail as the deadest piece of iron number in the trade. <laughs> Would you agree? Yes. Good, because it's in the book. <laughs> but the wisdom of our ancestors is in the simile. And my unhallowed hand shall not be allowed to disturb it, or the country is done for. So, you will, therefore, permit me to repeat emphatically that Marley was as dead as a... Old Betty Wig would have been a match for them, and so would Mr. 
is his destiny. And as for her, she was worthy to be called his partner in every sense of her A strange voice bade him enter. Come in, come in, and know me better, man. <laughs> Jolly giant, glorious to behold, who held in his hand a torch and held the fire to shed its light upon Scrooge as he came peeping round the door. It was clothed in a green robe, and this garment hung so loosely on its figure that its capacious breast was bare. Its hair was long and free, free as its sparkling eye, its open hand, its cheery voice, its unconstrained demeanour, and its joyful air. <laughs> come in, come in, and know me better, man. <laughs> I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. Hey, you've not seen the like of me before. Eh? <laughs> uh, no. No, indeed, I have not spirit. <laughs> spirit. A wonderful pudding. Everybody had something to say about it. Bob Cratchit said, and Carly too, that he regarded it as the single greatest achievement by Mrs. Cratchit. All was done. Little Bob stood and proposed. <coughs> Merry Christmas, my dears. Oh, man. God bless us. God bless us, said Tiny Tim. <laughs> Everyone. Spirit, said Scrooge, with an interest that he had never felt before. Tell me. If Tiny Tim will live, I see an empty seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. No, no spit, please. Please say that the child will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the boy will die. <laughs> oh, but what of that to the return? If he be like to die, then perhaps he had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Hey. Ebenezer Scrooge! Scrooge hung his head to hear his own words used against him. He remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting up his eyes, he beheld the solemn phantom draped and hooded, coming like mist along the ground towards him. It was clothed in a black robe that concealed its head, its face, its form, and left nothing of it visible save one outstretched hand. <laughs> I, I mean, the presence, oh, the ghost of, of Christmas. Yet to come. The spirit answered not, but pointed onward with its hand. Ghost of the future, I fear you more than any spectre I have seen. But. Since I know your purpose is to do me good, since I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company. Lead on, spirit, 
Lead on. To that stone, to that point. Tell me, are these the shadows of things that will be? Or are they the shadows of things that may be only? The hand was immovable as ever. And Scrooge, following the finger towards the stone, read upon it. No, 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 his own name, Ebenezer Scrooge. No, Spirit, I am not the man I was. I will not be the man. I must forgive her for this. Why show me all of this if I am beyond hope? The kind hand trembles. Spirit, I shall honor Christmas in my heart. I shall try to keep it all year round. I shall live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirit of all three shall strive within me. Oh, please, spirit, say I may sponge away the writing on this stone. In his agony, Scrooge caught at the spectral man, but the spirit, stronger than he, repulsed him. And Scrooge, holding up his hand in one last prayer for having saved the verse, saw an alteration in the phantom's hood and dress. It shrank. It's flat, it's dwindled down. No spirit, do not leave me here, don't leave me here. No spirit, no, no, no. No fog, no mist, but clear, bright, shining, golden sunlight. <laughs> the spirits have done it all in one night. They can do whatever they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. <laughs> Hello, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the poulterer's shop in the next big one on the corner? I should hope I did. An intelligent boy, a remarkable boy. Tell me, do you know if they sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey. The big one. <laughs> The one as big as me? What a delightful boy! It's a pleasure to see him! Yes, my mother. The one as big as you. Why? It's hanging up there now. Is it? Go and buy it, and tell the man to bring it back here, and I shall give him the directions where it's taken. Now then, you come back with him in less than five minutes, and I shall give you half a crown. Now be off with you. <laughs> I'll send it to Bob Cratchit. Growled <laughs> Scrooge. What do you mean by coming here at this time of the day? I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I think I am behind my time. You are? Yes, I think that you are. Oh, it, it, it shall not be repeated, sir. It, it's just, well, we was making rather merry yesterday, sir. It's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. Step this way, if you please. Crap. I shall tell you what, my friend. I am not going to stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, he continued giving Bob a dig in the ribs and turned him staggering back into the tank again. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I am about to raise your salary. He became as good a friend, 
as good a master, as good a man, as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alterations in him, but he let them laugh. He little heeded them. His own heart laughed, and that was enough for him. It was always said at Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed that knowledge. And may that be truly said of us. Oh, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless. <laughs>